deep belief networks before discussing this deep belief networks so let us go back to the traditional multi layer perceptrons okay we call them as mlps right so we already discussed about multi layer perceptrons so these are some traditional multi layer perceptrons we have discussed about them so what is the uh, drawback or what is the problem with these multi layer perceptrons actually so when we are doing back propagation okay so when we are performing back propagation this back propagation can often lead to a problem called local minima problem so uh, i hope uh, you remember what is local minima problem gurtunda malli cheppala local minima problem ante already ardham ayinda meeku intaku mundu cheppina class lo gurtunda local minima problem ante okay anyways i'll explain you okay so if uh, this is the thing so we'll be having graph something like this right if you see like this so like this if you take this one so here our error surface contains multiple groups so this is one group and this is the other other group and this is the other group so what is local minima problem local minima problem is nothing but we fall into a particular group in which actually let us say if we are falling in this particular group so this is actually not the lowest possible group right okay so to make it more clear okay i'll just draw like this okay so actually this is our lowest possible group okay but when we are performing back propagation okay so in this traditional multi layer perceptrons what actually happens is we fall into a particular group which is not the lowest possible group okay so when we are performing the concept of gradient descent so when we perform gradient descent okay while uh, working with back propagation we fall into a particular group which is not the local minima which is which is not the uh, lowest possible group actually our lowest possible group is this one okay so if we find out this group then it is okay but sometimes we will be uh, hanged up or sometimes we'll end up with uh, uh, we think that we in the sense the network thinks that this is the lowest possible group but actually our lowest possible group is this one okay so this kind of uh, e, uh, thing is the problem with the uh, traditional multi layer perceptron that is when we perform back propagation the traditional multi layer perceptron we tend to uh, we tend to reach a local minima but actually our aim is to find out the global minima right but often we hang up or often we are trapped at this local minima okay so this is the problem of uh, traditional uh, multi layer perceptrons okay so uh, uh, okay now so if you see here now what is the solution for this problem okay so the, the solution for this problem is deep belief networks so they are most frequently called as dbns okay deep belief networks so these deep belief networks they try to solve this problem by using an extra step called pre training okay so what is mean meant by pre training and all i'll tell you okay so this pre training is done before performing back propagation so generally in our traditional multi layer perceptron we'll simply perform the back propagation and we try to adjust the waves right so here in deep belief networks before performing back propagation what we'll do we'll perform a thing called pre training so this performance that is uh, that is uh, doing pre training it obviously leads to reduced error rate that is first of all pre training the network and then doing the back propagation will lead the network to have a reduced error rate that is if you take the error rate just representing it with er error rate with pre training plus back propagation okay is less than the error rate simply we get with the back propagation okay so doing pre training and then back propagation will have less error rate when compared to the error rate when we have done only the back propagation so this concept of pre training is the major and is the important thing we perform in deep belief networks so that these deep belief networks 
try to avoid these local minima okay so after performing this pre training we can then use this back propagation to reduce the error rate slowly as the network evolves okay now architecture of dbns so if you see in terms of the network structure the dbn is identical to mlp that is deep belief networks are identical to multi layer perceptrons in terms of network structure okay but in terms of training if we compare this uh, deep belief networks with mlps in terms of training they are completely different okay so dbns are completely different when compared in terms of training so actually uh, this difference in the training methods that is the difference in the training methods for dbns and mlp is the important factor which enables this dbns to perform better when compared to their counterparts okay so this training that is obviously with network structure these two are identical but only one thing differs that is training that is we have something called pre training right so this concept of pre training helps the deep belief networks to uh, to perform better when compared to multi layer perceptrons okay so if you see here the dbns can be viewed as stack of rbms so we discussed about rbm that is restricted boltzmann machine isn't it so now these dbns are viewed as stack of rbms so let us see how this uh, dbns are represented if you see this is our rbm1 okay so this is our rbm1 okay next this is our rbm2 i'll explain you okay this is our rbm1 and this is our rbm2 and this is our rbm3 and this is our rbm4 let us assume okay so if you see here a dbn is a stack of rbm so they are stacked up with each other that is first rbm and then place with second rbm and then the third rbm and then the fourth rbm and then here we have an output okay so if you see here the first rbm in restricted boltzmann machine we have two different types of uh, layer that is visible layer and then hidden layer right first layer is visible layer and the other layers are hidden layers so let us take this first rbm so this layer is the visible layer right so this is the visible layer and what is this layer this layer and this layer is the hidden layer for the first rbm isn't it so whenever we are performing see generally in our multi layer perceptron we we perform training for the entire network but here what we will do we told that we are going to perform pre training that is we will train this first rbm first okay so first of all we will train this first rbm okay after training this first rbm so if you see this is the visible layer okay this is the visible layer and this is the hidden layer okay now after after uh, performing some processing upon the after reconstructing all these inputs now these are transferred to the second rbm so this is our second rbm right so the hidden layer of the first rbm will now act as the visible layer for the second rbm okay so i hope you understand this one right so for this first rbm this is the visible layer and this is the hidden layer right now for second rbm this first rbm's hidden layer will be acting as the second rbm's visible layer so this will be the visible layer for the second rbm and this will be the hidden layer for the second rbm now what about third rbm this will be the visible layer for the third rbm and this will be the hidden layer for the third rbm what about fourth rbm this will be the visible layer for fourth rbm and this will be the hidden layer for the fourth rbm so this is how actually uh, the stack of rbms are placed to form dbns that is pre training happens that is so first of all training will happen to this one okay this first part and then training happens here okay and then training happens here so like this that is before performing back propagation we are going to pre train the network this pre training is the major fact which enables the dbns deep boltzmann uh, sorry sorry which enables the deep belief networks to perform better
so this process of uh, mean pre training is repeated until every la every layer in the network is trained okay so this is a block diagram of a deep belief network so if you see this is our visible layer and this is hidden layer 1 this is hidden layer 2 and this is hidden layer 3 okay now the connections in the top layers are undirected so this is our top layer okay just we represented this like this but actually our visible layer if you uh, if we rotate it this is our visible layer okay and this is our hidden layer right so this is the hidden layer and this is the visible layer top layer means this one okay uh, oh, sorry uh, uh, th these are the bottom layers okay the connection in the top layer means this one the, the top layer is hidden layer so this is our hidden layer so the connections in the top layer are undirected that is they are bidirectional that is they are, they perform in both the directions okay so this is how actually the associative memory is formed but connections in the lower layers are directed if you see from uh, hidden layer 1 to hidden, hidden layer 2 to hidden layer 1 only unidirectional uh, unidirection is there that is they are directed and here also it is directed that is information passes from this place to this place but not it does not go like this okay while uh, training okay while training is happening okay so uh, like this okay so the top layers are undirected so this hidden layers are the top layers are undirected and all the other layers are directed okay so this is the main important thing you have to remember later we will be discussing about deep boltzmann machine this present we are discussing about deep deep belief networks later we discuss about deep boltzmann machines okay dbms so there this difference plays a major role okay so for now you have to remember that in deep belief networks the top layers are undirected that is they are bidirectional and all the other layers are unidirectional that is they are directed okay so here the nodes in the hidden layer are going to fulfill two roles what is that they act as hidden layer to nodes that precede it this is what we have discussed just now so this is the hidden layer for the first rbm right so these hidden layer act as visible layer for the preceding nodes okay yeah, and they act as visible layers to the node that succeeded that is to the nodes here okay so to the nodes which are succeeding these nodes this hidden layer acts as a visible layer for this one right and this is the hidden layer for the previous node and similarly this is the hidden layer for the previous node and this is the visible layer for the next node okay so this is how actually um, the correlations between the data are identified between the nodes okay so here this this layer the top most layer is bidirectional undirected in the sense bidirectional that is information flows from here to here and here to here and all the other that is from this particular layer to this particular layer it is unidirectional okay this is the important point you have to remember now coming to the uh, working of dbns so here mainly we use greedy learning algorithms that is to pre train these deep belief networks we use greedy learning algorithms okay so why we are using greedy learning algorithms we know that the greedy learning algorithms make optimal choices that is at each and every layer that is each at a, each and every stack of rbm okay we are going to uh, solve this particular problem by using optimal choices and eventually we try to find a global optimum isn't it so we wanted to get a global optimum not just a local optimum value we wanted to get the global optimum value so this is possible by using pre training with the help of a greedy learning algorithm so if you see here greedy learning algorithm start from the bottom layer and they move up fine tuning the generative weights okay all the weights which are generated they are fine tuned okay and here if you observe as we already discussed learning takes place layer by layer basis okay what does it mean the layers of the deep belief networks are trained one at a time this layer is trained at one time and this layer is trained at the next time and this layer is trained at the next time and so on so what actually happens each layer now then receives a different version of the data because these are the we, we are going to give the inputs for this one right so when we are giving the inputs this this particular uh, stack is going to reconstruct the inputs and from this again it receives inputs okay so for each and every uh, training each and every layer receives a different version of the data okay because each layer is going to use the output from the 
previous layer that is the output from this layer will be given as input to this layer so this output will be given as input to this one so that it is going to um, identify more uh, uh, more uh, dependencies between these inputs so this is how it is going to reconstruct this particular input so why we are using greedy learning algorithms they are used to train these deviants because they are quick and efficient and finally they help to optimize the weights at the each layer that is the reason we are using these greedy learning algorithms now coming to dbn training so how dbn training actually happens so we just uh, discussed about this dbn training also uh, again i'm repeating that is uh, the training happens layer by layer this layer this layer this layer and then this layer so each uh, there are some points to note each rpm layer learns the entire input so if you compare uh, this with our uh, uh, other uh, networks that is let us compare this rbms with the convolution neural networks which we have discussed earlier so what happens in the convolution neural networks if you observe let us say this is one layer and uh, this is another layer and this is uh, let us say this is some another layer okay so what happens in the convolution neural networks the starting layers tries to find out the basic features right so if you uh, take a, a human being a, a photo facial photograph okay so the starting layers try to understand the basic things that is edges that's the starting layers try to find out the uh, values in these edges that is the basic features of edges and the next layer tries to combine these edges and it tries to get a some better representation of this face and again the latter layers the latter layers combine all these things and they try to get a complete face image right so this is what actually happening in the convolution neural networks right so the first layers in the convolution neural networks oh, they filter the inputs for basic features that is say such as edges and what later layers will do these later layers will combine all these simple patterns and they try to combine these simple patterns which are found by the previous layers and then they try to construct the complete image isn't it so this actually happens in our convolution neural networks but in contrast in in rbm each rbm layer that is if you see each rbm layer that is this is layer 1 this is layer 2 this is layer 3 so each rbm layer and learns the entire input the entire input is learned but in contrast in convolutional neural networks the entire input is not learned by the each layer each layer learns only a part of the input that is it identifies the basic features that is the first layers identify the basic features the next layers identify some more complex features and the last layers identify the complete features of the input data so in rbm but every layer learns the entire input okay so this is how the the belief networks work globally and they regulate each layer in order as the model slowly improves so when the model is slowly evolving and the model is slowly improving each and every layer is trained and it tries to find out the global optimum okay now applications of deep belief networks so they are used in image recognition they are used in video recognition and they are also used in motion capture data okay so these are all the um, some of the applications of deep belief networks